Hey, I think we're connected. I don't know for sure, but I think we're live. It's been a while. But I'm still alive. How are you guys doing? I'm trying to get a hold of y'all to chat again. To be able to go ahead and talk about some of the changes since I was here last. I'm not sure. We'll check my volume. Make sure you can hear me. Looks like you can. There's a few people getting on. Hey guys, welcome. Been a long time since we talked. I'm going to try to stay on long enough that I can go ahead and reach a few people. Normally, FB is not very kind about getting out to everybody. Wow, look at all these people. Hey, if you haven't seen, I'm publishing on a platform called Substack. It's uh, Tiny Texas Houses at Substack.com. And you can search for whoever you want, slash publish, if you want to use that. You can search for Tiny Texas Houses. I'm doing a newsletter. But believe it or not, I'm actually going to put out some books. I put out a little short book already on there. I'm going to put another short book out on there and then another one. And that way everybody can get all this information on a platform other than Facebook, which seems to go ahead and really limit what I can get to you all about how to empower you to make tiny houses, to create an alternative life. One that makes getting old fun, at least in my view. Yeah, my, my drinking cup at the moment. So, are you had enough of 2021 yet? You about ready for 2022? Have you thought about what you're going to do? See, I believe in many of you. Yeah. We're going on a trip. It's an imaginary trip. It's into a world. Great to see you too, Annie. A world where we can make everything happen in a peaceful way, in a productive way. I want to give you the tools. I want to give you windows to see into the future, doors of opportunity to open. And if you can do it, structures you can build to keep you out of the storm, allow you to maybe get together, grow some villages. We can all have little tiny houses here and there and everywhere and go about and see each other and know we got a safe place to stay jab free territory or whatever you want to call it patriots various groups that want to be together share happy to you too hey i am so glad to see you yeah we had uh given the great turkeys a break and had some really good filet mignon courtesy of trinity in her first attempt and very successfully at filet mignon with au jus that's not vegetarian but every once in a while, special days. There were some other things on the table. A beautiful table set this evening. We had an excellent, excellent dinner. Communing together. Now I want to m mention this, and this is very important. What I'm trying to do at this stage with creating Salvage Texas, with being able to show everybody that you can be healthy, happy, goodness gracious, even when you get old, and you can be able to go out and do things, and learn from our elders. Speaking of which, I am. She is one of those great people that I would love to be able to transfer her knowledge and package it. Just so we could know how to do all these things that are going to need to be done by somebody someday. Whether it's raising chickens and rabbits and pigs or packaging up stuff that you grew so it'll last through the winter. I'm not good enough to be able to tell everybody how to do this, but I want to bring together the elders that can. Some platform, some means of all of us joining hands and saying, hey, we can solve these problems. And thank you, Annette. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very thankful we have some people out there even watching, even paying attention at this point. It's so easy to get distracted. So many people tied up in fear. And that's keeping them from doing things. Now, we had seminars a couple years, few years back. I had it during Christmas and New Year's. Free. 
It was the last one I had, really, that a long time ago, it seems now. The goal was to teach people how to take these houses down and then go ahead and put them together again and make free housing. Human energy. Not carbon-fueled. If you like carbon credits, man, you can't get any more carbon-friendly than a house built out of salvage. One way or the other, through adversity, through need, through the price of lumber going through the roof, $1,500 a thousand. I guarantee you, we're going to be using more salvage and materials in the future. If you can't import, guess what? Go find a factory in the United States that you can turn iron ore into iron <sighs> and uh, all the other things we need. Where are the kids? Where are the workers? You. Only you out there. Hey, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to have you visiting and so many people. I'd love to have them come through, learn, share, teach. I've got so many things I need to learn still. We need more people to come through and help us with the permaculture, the food jungle. It's going well. <laughs> but, ah, got to process it. Got to be able to learn how to harvest it. Got to learn how to pack it away for the winter. I don't know all these things. I haven't got enough life left to learn them all myself. And that's the case for many others. I was able to specialize in a few things. Real estate, how to build houses out of trash, maybe how to show others. We have a stash. We have enough put away that we could literally build two, three, four hundred houses. I'm not kidding you. Whoa, did that go dark? Wow, we won't back that off. No, I'm serious. What I don't have after studying this for 15 years. This is going to take a network spread out over large distances. Because shipping houses, which are basically boxes of air across large distances that are sitting there so high they hit bridges if you don't watch out. It's very expensive. It costs as much to ship a house from Texas to Georgia. 15000 or more, if you can do it. <laughs> if you can do it. That's the labor to build the whole thing. Now, if it's not in a big box of air and it's compacted and you put two or three of them on the back of a semi, you can ship them all over there for $5,000 or less and build three houses over there and save $45,000 in shipping, which is enough to pay for the three houses to be built. Hey, well, my friends, look at this. Now, I don't know if it's Liv, Liv Joppa. Thank you for visiting. Um, it's very important that we do this locally. It's very important that we do this with co-ops, pure salvage outposts where we gather all the tools together and the elders come in and help teach those who want to learn. Maybe other elders that never learned how to do anything. It happens. It may be kids, believe it or not. Some do want to learn. What are you going to do in your small town? <coughs> Here's the issue facing most rural issue, towns, and that's that you have a cluster of elders. And if they don't find something to do, they're going to have to go to the city for care, health care. The kids, if they don't find something to do, they're going to have to go to the city for jobs. So instead, we take all those things and we say, hey, stay. Don't go. Let's take down all these assets, all these resources, and let's convert them or sell them off. And the town then revitalizes, comes back to life. I know this can be done. I want more for revitalization. Neighborhoods, towns can be revitalized. Now, how do you do that? Well, <laughs> no magic formula. What you do is put in the energy and the effort of the people locally getting together and trying to do something united together. They're going to have to do it locally because an outsider like me can't come in and do it. Been there, done that. I don't fit in. Why? I don't know. I just feel so normal in Salvage, Texas. In the rest of the places, I don't feel so normal. And you might not think I'm normal, but if one of your locals, one of your elders, 
some of the most important people in your community. They get out there and say, hey, let's put together a pure salvage outpost and we'll all get together and have a co-op. And at this co-op, we'll go ahead and look at how we're going to put assemble these houses out of the ones we're going to take down. Instead of just trash them and throw them in the dump, let's save that glass and not make new glass. Let's save those doors. Let's save that lumber and not cut down more at $1,500 a thousand. Cut down trees that shouldn't be... Now the baby trees are 15 years old. And the trees in those old houses and old barns, they're 150 years since they were cut. And they were 1,000 years old when they were cut. And you're going to throw that away and go buy cheap wood from where Canada and ship it all the way down here instead of just go out locally and take down something. And we've got to teach this. If we could teach this and the children see, wow, there's a living, a career in what's locally here already. Bricks. Now make me a brick. Put clay into a mold and heat it up enough to make a hard brick. Or go out and tear down a building and clean the brick up and stack them up in pallets. Which is going to cost you more carbon? Which is going to cost you more money from a standpoint of labor? Put a factory together. Feed it full of a bunch of fuel. Where are you going to get the fuel from? To bake all the bricks from. Especially if you don't have any more being produced in our country. Hmm, how'd that happen? So, let's just suppose for a minute. We're going to go ahead and conserve. We're going to go ahead and do like our granddaddy and grandmama did. We're going to go ahead and pretend... Like we have a need, almost like in the Depression when 48% of the kids moved home. Guess what? Oh, yeah. 52% of the kids have already moved back home again. That's more than last time we had a Depression. But we're not calling it a Depression. No. What is it? COVID nightmare or something like that. I don't know. They keep saying something on TV and I just can't catch it. Dang it. I'll just go watch some football. Eat some turkey. Get drunk. In the morning, I'll have a headache. Oops. Oops, that's not me. Oops, sorry. Happy Thanksgiving. That's right. Please, if you're watching football and all that kind of junk, and if you're not paying attention, if you're getting all drunk, ah, uh, tomorrow's going to be a rough day. But for the rest of you, hey, please, let's come up with a plan, huh? How about preparing? Did you notice the food's getting a little more expensive for Christmas? Did you notice that maybe something under the tree instead of a bunch of toys, a bunch of junk, how about putting some skill sets down there? How about putting some tools? How about a DeWalt saw or something like that if you can find one? How about some certificates for materials? Certificates that you can hand somebody and say, here, here's $5,000, here's $10,000 worth of materials to put your house, your dream home together. And here's one for you too, son. And here's one for you too, daughter. And together we're going to build us a getaway, a retreat, a place we go with the grandbabies to teach them how to fish, to teach them how to grow stuff in the garden, to teach them how to go out and get eggs from chickens and eat healthy. And then we'll go back to the city and we'll have this little place out there with a the gardener. That's our guard. You know, the one named Nur. That's an old person that lives in one of the tiny houses that takes care of growing things for you. And then anybody comes around, your guard, that gardener named Nur, is going to make sure. They don't take nothing. It's his house, too. Or her house. I'll tell you what. Any guard named Nur with a nice 12-gauge shotgun, it don't matter what size, what shape. Somebody comes messing with your stuff, they'll take care of it while you're gone. I guarantee you that's their home, too. It's like having a grandma and grandpa. If you don't have one, it might be a good time to adopt one. There's a whole bunch of them out there right now. Good people. No kids. I know what that's like. Think about it. What knowledge do you have? You want to just be bitter and not share? You want to go and take those tools out there and show you care? Help some lady frame her house. And once you get a frame, once you get that roof on there, she can put the siding on. She can put wood on all day long. Her little $7,500 chunk of doors and windows and flooring and everything will build her a house that's worth forty-five, fifty-five, sixty-five thousand dollars $65,000. I'm supplying those packages, by the way. I'm supplying them in, his num in many ways. Put half down and you got credit card or something like that. 7500 to 5000 down and a $10,000 package. And you can have a house just like some of the examples that I built to give everybody an idea of what is possible. I, I guarantee you, I learned through making mistakes I want to show you don't make these mistakes here's a better way to do it if you do 
We can have people all over the country building these right where you're at, man. Don't ship them across country. Build them locally. Build them on your land. If you got a team, a local co-op, and they get on their trucks and grab their saws, you can raise a house in a matter of three or four days with a crew of six or eight people. You can get it far enough along and dry it in with the windows, the doors, the floors, and the roof, and the exterior siding that somebody can go in there and finish out the interior themselves. It doesn't matter, ladies or men. It doesn't matter if the men are masculine or if the men are ladylike, or it doesn't matter if the women are manlike. It is just simply a matter of human beings and human energy applying itself. It could be kids, for that matter, 14 years old, if they're allowed to be around a saw. This could be a business for a family. I turn away 40 to 50 houses a year because I'm not going to build them and ship them around the country anymore. You can build them yourself. I made 75 different models that we can go ahead and copy. Because I know Americans love to copy shit. I'd like to see more original creators. I want to send it out there. We'll get different windows, different doors. I'll help do a space magic design even. But I want other creators out there. The more houses are getting built locally, the more people will unite, in other words, and create community, communicating together under a united flag of let's go ahead and take and save the world by saving our salvage. Salvation through salvage. Save our communities. Save our elders. Save our kids giving us some life skills. Salvation through salvage. It's a simple, simple way of doing it. SOS. Planet SOS. Save our salvage or we're not going to have any resources. Salvage our minds. Salvage our bodies. Salvage our children who are being eaten up in the brain by these computers and iPhones that keep them from being able to think clearly without a phone. What are we going to do if the lights go out? What skills do the kids have? Where are they going to live? Oh, that's right. They're all coming home to take care of the parents. Because the parents need help. And also the parents got a paycheck and Social Security or whatever it is. And it's getting kind of crazy. So, let's put the kids to work building tiny houses. And if they leave, you got tiny houses to rent out and make a good income called a B&B, bed and breakfast income of other people either staying there and leaving at a very good dollar or staying there and helping, which is equal to a lot more. So, let's just run some numbers real quick. I'm no, I'm dragging this on. I'm dragging this on for a reason. Because some people are going to come, some people are going to go. But I'll tell you this. If you take and put 10 houses out there, tiny houses, and use them as a B&B, and you build them yourself, if it took you $7,500 packages and you spent $75,000 plus your, your energy, your help, your, your, your grandkids, your family, and you put 10 houses out there, and you got a little garden going, your income off those 10 houses per year is about $1,000 a month or better per house. That's ten thousand a month. That's one hundred twenty thousand dollars a month, if you only rent them out ten days a month, as a bed and breakfast, each. Now, imagine if you have something going on like a pond, a pool, a garden, a whole event center of some sort that you got ten of these houses set up, and you take it up a little more. And every time you have a seminar on how to do this, you build it, and then you got another house. Next thing you know, you got twenty houses after twenty seminars. Let's say you sell a few of the houses. They're worth $45,000 a piece. So you sell four or five houses. That's $200,000. How much did you spend on the packages to make 20 houses? $200,000. How many houses do you have left over after you sell four or five? 15 houses. Making you $1,000 a month each if they're not even full-time. B and B. That's chunk of change, fifteen thousand dollars times twelve turns into hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year times ten years turns into a chunk of change that you can go ahead and live on if you are frugal. Now you can even hire somebody to change the sheets and clean the house and stuff like that and still make that kind of money. It's built into those numbers. Now you have to be near a river with a bunch of rafters, you have to be on a biking trail, you happen to be on the, the call right there, you got a permaculture, you got a wine tasting, whatever you got, you need tiny houses on there. They're all organic, all natural, no imports, 
No plastics. No vinyls. No cancer-causing gases coming out of there. No ugly sheetrock that's half hazardous waste mixed with gypsum. So you'll buy it with paper. Black mold spores, come with it. Just wet it down. You watch. Instead, no imports. Instead, no toxins. Instead, wood that was cut down by our ancestors. Why is this so hard to figure out, America? Will you? How many of you will? That's the game today. That's really all I came to say. I'm offering up packages for $7,500 to $10,000 each. It'll give you all the flooring, all the walls, all the ceilings, all the doors, all the siding, all the floors, all the roof, all the windows, even the hardware, the doorknobs, door plates, hinges. The rest is labor, nails, screws. It's an underlayment underneath the roof. It's a house wrap. Hopefully you get the aluminized version. It's insulation. A little bit of wiring. And it's all you. And your friends. Your relatives. Your people. And guess what? If you go to mysubstack.com and read about it, you get tax write-offs and benefits. And your friends can help buy them and write them off and help you out. And everybody can be happy, happy, happy. And it's called the LG Brandon Tax Plan. Part of the loopholeology I teach. All the loopholes. If it's under 400 square foot in Texas and it's a portable building, there's no 15% bed and breakfast tax, for example. I teach these things through all these things I write, generally, and I will speak them on this video after a while, but first we got to see if we get any traffic. That's right. Salvation through salvage. Honestly, guys, I've got everything you need. If you're honest, truthful people, if you want to do something, you put the money down, put half down, and we'll work the rest of it out. And you build a house and show you can do it, and you want to sell them, I'll back you. Anywhere. Come and get it. Learn a little bit. Show me you can do it. Take it away. Please. I'm not building them to sell anybody a house anymore. I'll teach you. I'll even have seminars. And we're going to have also, by the way, another offering of the airspace certificates. And that's basically a chance for you to buy one square inch above this place. And every square inch you buy, you get discounts. You buy $10,000 worth of square inches, you're going to get yourself a package of materials. Coincidentally, I'm going to give them to you. That way there's no tax. That way you can just use them to build with that trash. And you create a beautiful house out of that trash. And guess what? It has no taxable value. It's just a portable building built out of trash. Now, if you sell it to your uncle for $40,000... And it costs you all sets of money, like the trips down here, and the gas, and the truck, and the tools to build it. You write all those off against that profit. And your uncle, he depreciates it. And at the end of 10 years, when he's done depreciating it, he can give it to your daughter or your granddaughter as a tax-free gift. No value. Just a depreciated old building. Now, loopholeology. Loopholeology. What is that? You use the loopholes, guys. If you don't, I can't help you. Please. That's what this is about. Now, I dare not go on too long. But I do hope, for those of you that made it and stayed, that you got something out of it. I hope that you learned something that you can share. That you like it. They always say on here whenever I listen to this stuff. And that you'll share it. But more importantly, go there and see. I got, geez, three or four books already written on Substack.com under the Tiny Texas Houses moniker. Please, share. Learn how you can go ahead and give to your children, your grandchildren in a way that makes them go ahead and put out the human energy. Learn the life skills. Become part of a group, part of a plan. Somehow, us elders, and I know I'm one of those now. Jeez. Got here fast. But at 66, please, I'm getting concerned. We got to do something. Those babies coming out of the womb right now, if we don't do something quick, they're going to be zombified. Jabbed and destroyed by the education system. By the computers in their hands, giving off radiation, destroying their brains. By the chemicals being injected and 
fed to them through their food. Please, I am here to say there is a simpler, healthier, happier way to live. I attest to this having lived the other way, having raised a son and lost him. Please, pay attention. Those are your babies. Consider, if you're wrong, if all that radiation in the city, if all those chemicals, if that's not going to hurt your baby and make them all plump and swell up and sick and diabetic like they seem to be, well then, what is? What are you doing about it? Please. Let's stop. Pause. If you can, visit. Walk around, see what's possible. An industrial waste dump turned into a paradise is an example of what we can do to bring life back, to salvage our very best of our past. And if possible, man, can we please create a good future? I cannot believe these mandates. I am dead against everything about forcing anybody to do anything they have sworn to God not to do. One of them is honor thy vessel, but more importantly as a parent. Don't you dare risk that vessel until you are ungodly sure. That's my advice. I watched my son suffer from the vaccines of the old days and develop Asperger's after the last injections. I watched it and seen it. Please, I had many vaccines. This is not a vaccine. And this is going to get me tagged, I know. But I didn't say which one. I just said that one. Please, y'all have a good day. If I could do anything to help you put together that village, put together that retreat, trust me. That's why I'm here. Materials, plans, designs. I can go anywhere in this telephone, around the world. I'm here to help. Give me a call. And the rest of you guys, Zach, I, and a whole bunch of you, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to come online here next. We're going to hopefully have some help. A lot of technical stuff. I don't have the time for it. I can't figure it out. But I do believe. I have faith. Everybody's lighting up now. Next couple of years, exciting times. Y'all have a good one, okay? Thank you, thank you.